What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Juan here again with a new video. I hope you guys are all doing well. And as always, very excited to sit down with you guys to talk about more sports creative content. If you guys are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Juan and I'm a 24 year old sports filmmaker and content creator based out of Toronto, Ontario. I'm here on YouTube to share my journey as a creative working in sports, but also help you guys find opportunities in the sports creative world and help you guys along the way. Today's video is a breakdown of one of my favorite projects so far with the NHL. And that is my Heritage Classic teaser trailer that I got to do earlier in March. And this event was actually the first NHL game and the first NHL event I actually got to shoot. So this is a video that I'm incredibly proud of and it was just such a fun experience to create. If you guys aren't familiar with what the Heritage Classic is, it is essentially one of these several outdoor games that the NHL hosts throughout its calendar. It's essentially a regular season game played outdoors in a football field in the middle of the winter. This one was held in Hamilton, Ontario at Tim Hortons Field where the Ticats play and it was between the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Buffalo Sabres. This was an unbelievable event to shoot with the amount of fans that were there, the environment, the situation of outdoor NHL game and it was like I said my first NHL game been shooting sports for the last three or four years and I have not gone to shoot an NHL game up until this one so it was definitely one for the books and one I will always remember but the video I got to produce ahead of the game is one of the things that I will just treasure the most from that experience this was actually a piece I was able to produce shoot and edit by myself and it was the first one I got to kind of head during my time at the NHL so I'm gonna really be able to go in depth on the way I shot and edited the piece but also a little bit into pre-production and how I prepared ahead of time before shooting the actual video this is not going to be a very technical or gear focused video because i really do just want to dive straight into it and kind of break down the edit break down certain shots and why i did particular things when both shooting and editing but i know people are going to ask anyways so for the record this was entirely shot on my sony a7s3 with a combination of handheld rig footage and some gimbal work and then when it came to lenses it was mostly just my 28 to 75 tamron or my 70 to 200 sony this is also just going to be a more off the cuff video not really scripted i just kind of want to go into it break it down talk Talk about certain shots talk about certain scenarios and just have this be more of an organic sit down chat about how i put this video together really quickly though i'll bring up the video just so you guys can watch it before we break it down quick chat about pre-production here because I did do a lot of work before actually getting out to shoot the video, which really impacted the final product. Here's some context for those who don't know how the outdoor game weekend schedule works, but typically the games are held on the Sunday of the weekend and the Saturday ahead of time, both teams have access to the rink outdoors to kind of get accustomed to the new environment, skate on the rink for the first time and just get used to it ahead of the game. So when I pitched this idea, I knew very well I wanted all the footage to come from the practice day ahead of time just to capture the players in this new environment. It's an outdoor hockey rink. It's a very unique situation to be in. So I wanted all the footage to come from the practice day alone and I didn't really want to lean on any broadcast footage from previous games from both teams because I feel like that for sports hypes is done all the time but for an event like this an outdoor hockey game I wanted to just focus on the environment and the players being there for the first time this was mostly to have control over the shots that I actually wanted and needed to get versus having to bother somebody and kind of direct someone remotely but also just to give it a more cinematic and unified look by shooting it solely on one camera which was the a7s3 when it came to shot listing this piece apart from obviously shooting the players practicing and the action on the ice i knew that the biggest part of this video was going to be the scenics and the establishing shots because of the location and the environment we were in this is an outdoor nhl game which is as unique of an environment as you'll ever find in any sporting event ever and so i knew i really wanted to capture the essence of where it was and what it symbolized for the nhl for the city of hamilton and just for the whole event itself 
So establishing and scenic shots were right at the top of my list. And some of the first things I shot that weekend, you know, shots of the venue, shots of the rink in the actual stadium, shots from the stands. Uh, so many small details here and there to showcase a hockey rink in the middle of a football field. There are so many different ways you can showcase that in a very cinematic, artistic and beautiful way, which was one of my biggest goals for this video. When it came to shooting the actual on ice action during the practice, it was a little hard to come up with a shot list because obviously you don't have much control in this scenario. You're kind of just a fly on the wall documenting what What's happening on the ice but i did make a mental note to get shots of specific players luckily both the leafs and sabers have high profile players like austin matthews ross mistalian and mitch marner so i was easy to kind of keep tabs on specific people get iso shots of them uh, because obviously they're the stars of the game but at the same time uh, they're just people that are easily recognizable from both teams that would get a good reaction and good engagement in the video from fans this is also one of the more unique sporting events I've ever shot purely because of the weather and the elements we were exposed to. We obviously shot this in the middle of the winter in Hamilton and you'd expect a winter day in Southern Ontario to be gray and overcast. But by the time the Sabres hit the ice, it was really sunny, clear skies and incredibly bright outside. So we dealt with that harsh sunlight for most of the afternoon, but around six or seven o'clock golden hour came in and you guys are gonna see in the footage, it's just some incredible looking stuff with the golden soft light coming down during sunset unbelievable stuff but then once again we had to deal with the change in the outdoor scenario because when the leafs got onto the ice a couple hours after it was pitch black and we had to deal with floodlights and stadium lighting instead of natural sunlight i actually really enjoyed having to work with so many different lighting scenarios and the elements because you know you go from that you know really harsh sunlight in the afternoon to the beautiful golden hour right before the sun goes down and then you go to this really cool friday night lights football style vibe while the leafs are practicing and then it just starts snowing like it started snowing so much which as a videographer i was so happy with because once you throw that into 120 frames per second and slow it down there were just some beautiful beautiful shots and so playing around with the weather and the elements as much of a challenge as it was i actually really enjoyed it and it made me kind of think on my feet it made for a really unique looking piece final pre-production note is just regarding music and if you guys have seen my breakdowns before you know that i'm always in a stress make sure you have your music or an idea of what kind of music you want to have before you shoot any video for several reasons the biggest one being just having an idea of what the vibe and the flow of your video is going to be is going to really change the way you shoot on the day of and it'll really give you some idea of what visual would go well with your final edit in mind i know for these style of hypes and teasers i usually go for the very epic and drum heavy and you know cinematic style trailer music but with this i went with more of an electronic vibe more chill more funky it has some synths to it the beat was very dynamic lots of highs lots of lows great interludes building into really nice like you know high energy section of the song uh, which gave it a really free-flowing energetic yet really focused vibe and that having that in mind when I was shooting was such a big help because I was able to visualize the video as I was shooting it and hearing the song in my mind just gave me the ability to get certain shots that made it into the video that flowed perfectly with the song itself Apologies if you hear me with a bit of a raspy throat. I've had a kind of a throat ache cough for the past week and a half, which is why I haven't been able to shoot any videos. Um, but anyways, getting into the actual breakdown, uh, I'm essentially, like I said, it's going to be a very free flowing breakdown. I want to go through over a couple shots, explain my mentality over them and a bit of a few things over the edit. But for the most part, gonna be a very just general overview of how I put this video together. So this video was split into three different parts for a few reasons. One, it follows the chronological order of the day from arriving, getting scenics to the Sabres on the ice, to the Leafs on the ice. But the other reason was just to kind of split it up and not mash both teams together, but give them equal amounts of screen time and focus on one team at a time as a viewer. So the intro, like I said, is all the scenic shots I got. The second act of the video is all the Sabre shots. And then the third act closes out with focusing on the Maple Leafs and their practice. And I think this also really showcases those kind of different weather elements I mentioned before. So the beginning of the video, you see the sunlight, you see that kind of clear day blue skies uh, in the second part of the video you're starting to see more of that golden hour you're starting to see more of that warmth and then when it comes to the Leafs it's all the floodlights it's the Friday night lights kind of feel that I mentioned before so it kind of separates it visually into three different parts as well so the first part of the video I'm going to break down is the scenics and this is obviously a really important part that I mentioned in the pre-production section just because of the situation and the environment we're in it's so unique it is literally a hockey rink in the middle of a football stadium a really unique look the NHL events team absolutely crushed it with how the rink looked and the whole stadium was dressed up so I really wanted just to give it its spotlight at the beginning of the video to showcase this brand new and unique environment I mentioned it before but this was mostly split between gimbal and handheld although most of the gimbal work was really just for the scenic moments here at the start uh, 
uh, a lot of you guys know I have a love-hate relationship with those things, but they do come in handy, and it was the perfect tool to use to capture these amazing scenics of the actual stadium. Something I love doing with gimbals when getting scenics is adding movement, but also movement in the foreground, and you're going to see it right here in this first shot with the chairs in the, uh, in the stands. Just having them kind of disappear from the frame just gives it this much more kind of reveal style shot. I love the look of it. Having any movement in front of your lens is automatically going to make your shot a lot more cinematic, a lot more pleasing to the eye. And that was exactly what I wanted to do with this first shot here. The next three establishing shots all go together because they're all stationary shots um, of very similar things. You have the wide of the floodlight, you have the heritage classic branding across the stadium and another close up of the floodlights. But what really the reason I made these stationary is because when the music picks up at around like the four or five second mark, I actually add movement into the shots again, which you'll see right here. So as soon as the beat goes a little quicker and has a little bit more of pace to it, I add all the movement in the shots and you might notice here as well, and I've said this before, all the movement is going in the same left to right direction, just so when you're looking at the edit from a viewer's perspective, it's a lot easier to cut from uh, clip to clip, even though they don't match exactly, the movement is all similar. So it's not really as jarring for the audience member to view. Something really minor here that I just wanna to touch on that I think a lot of people should take note of is you know, when you shoot something, try to get a wide, medium, and close up of it. So here I have kind of a close up of the floodlights on the top of the stadium. And then the next shot right after is a kind of a medium wide adding movement, but it's essentially just a different angle of what I was shooting before. And it's a lot cleaner of a cut. It's a lot easier to see. So whenever you're shooting scenics, try to get a wide, try to get a medium, try to get a close up of those little details because you don't know when you're gonna wanna mix them in. And sometimes it can just lead to a much cleaner looking edit. So we're gonna move on from here. We have all the moving shots, scenics, NHL logo there the title card which then signifies the end of that sequence and moving on to kind of the act two which is the sabers coming on to practice the first sequence here for the sabers is just them walking in just a couple iso shots still on the road in rsc2 i knew i wanted to get specific players Ocpozo and dalin that you see these two guys here i uh, made sure to iso in on them uh, a lot of personality shown in this this practice because a lot of the guys are wearing sunglasses they're letting the hair out because um, it was a nice sunny day. So really nice shot here, just tracking Darlene walking up. One of my favorite shots of the day, to be honest. And the lighting was a little bit difficult to work here with, uh, mostly because they were backlit. The sun is kind of in the back corner here. This is around 5.30, um, you know, just right before the sun's about to set. But I honestly thought the rim lighting for both of them, the backlit just gave a nice little rim lighting here on the sides of their jersey, gave the image a lot more depth versus just being flat lighting, which I really liked. And then here I switched to an inverse angle of Dylan and cousins who I'm just, again, following them into the arena. These were all shot at the exact same time. I'm just running around getting different looks. And you're gonna be able to notice how drastic the lighting changes throughout the entire video uh, as I move around the arena and that's the time the day changes. But yeah, just coupled these three shots together, very similar, a really small speed ramp here between Darlene and Ocpozo, just to give it a bit more energy. I used speed ramps here and there in this video. Originally, it was full of speed ramps and I just decided it was way too much, but there are a few of them here and there, just to link shots together this is essentially a very similar shot so i try to match cut it as best as possible we'll move on to cousins here and then it's the guys actually getting onto the ice the reason for the ramp here very different shot moving in a different direction so this kind of takes the edge off that cut a little bit but still kind of allows it to be more of a natural looking transition one more thing about these two shots here and i think i showcase it better with Ocpozo here but it's just the framing and the composition of it framing and composition is something i'm really working on recently on my videos just to give them more of an aesthetically and cinematically looking style uh, you're going to see here Ocpozo is obviously framed to the right of the screen using the rule of thirds as an act you know as a concept concept here uh, just to give him a little bit more breathing room ahead of time it just looks like a better image versus just having him in the middle of the screen uh, just something you're going to notice here how I frame players specifically with the rule of thirds uh, they're usually on the left or the right side of the screen with a lot of you know face forward room a lot of breathing room in front of them uh, just to give more of an aesthetically pleasing image even with cousins here you're going to notice he is on the left side of the screen with a lot more breathing room a lot more you know front empty space here just leading to more of an interesting image you get to see some of the floodlights you get to see some of the stadium here and then the main focus is obviously here on the right but you have a lot of different elements that you normally wouldn't get if it was just smack in the middle of the frame 
Next sequence here is a lot of the guys ahead of the skate laughing, having a good time before we get into the action. Another close up here. I use a lot of close ups in this one. Again, showcasing the emotion. I've talked about that in a lot of my videos before. Emotion is so important and so key in these videos. Rule of thirds applies here, although not as much because he's moving, but you can see he's framed to the left side of the frame. Empty space here. You get to see some of his teammates in the background also having a laugh. Uh, lots of depth in this image. Obviously, we're at a football stadium. This is probably on my 70 to 200, which really allowed me to use the depth and the distance in the back background to create a really interesting looking image this following sequence is just a lot of action shots some speed ramping lots of slow motion just to kind of slow down the play give it more of a kind of aesthetically pleasing and kind of poetry motion style feel to the practice really quickly want to talk about speed ramps here as i use them a lot uh, a few times to showcase particular moments and kind of things i want to highlight to the audience in this case this player gets a goal in the practice nice little snipe over the goalie's shoulder it is a very small space to score and there's not much space between the goalie's glove shoulder and the corner of the net and so as soon as he lets the puck go and it goes into the net i drop it to 20 percent slow motion for the viewers to see how little space the player actually had to score a goal like that just a really nice kind of slow down moment and i think with speed ramps all the time and you'll notice it in this clip here too you just really get to slow down moments and situations that at full speed you don't really get to take in entirely you know this save right here at full speed would have looked great but it's even more impressive when i ramp it right as the puck goes into the glove and it doesn't always have to be speed ramps even here just slow motion of this guy flipping the puck have a lot of slow motion moving on here throughout the practice and it just allows you to notice certain details little things throughout the clip right here alex tuck is pulling it between his legs which was a nifty little move that you wouldn't normally catch in full speed more detail shots here of just the skate and the sticks this is something i love to do as a cutaway shot in hockey just capture sticks skates things that aren't the players faces just for transitional b-roll so this next sequence is just of the sabers getting off the ice i do want to talk really specifically about this shot because i think this might be one of my favorite frames i've captured ever for several different reasons which i'm about to get into number one i think it was just the perfect combination of excellent lighting perfect composition and just the capabilities of the a7s3 uh, just the amount of detail i was able to get in this shot here as uh, this guy comes off the ice it's really beautifully front lit with the sun coming here at the front uh, it's golden hour obviously so the light is a lot warmer and softer than usual and then just the a7s3 with the ability to get all this information with a dynamic range that s log 3 has i'm able to capture you know the blue sky in the background you have the floodlights of the stadium turning on um, but even when it comes to actually the subject itself you have just a really beautifully front lit subject with the shadows not really harshly dropping off of him uh, and it's still very nice lit even to the back of the subject and i love 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 the amount of detail the camera was able to capture here uh, obviously you know the droplets of water on the front of the visor here just like his facial expression uh, this is obviously an extreme close-up as well and the composition worked really well here lots of breathing room in the front lots of you know negative space with some elements that you can see here but your focus is directly on the player there's just I, I know i just rambled on for like the last minute there but i just think this is a beautiful shot that i was really happy with just visually um one of my favorite shots that's ever come out of the a7s3 and that i've ever captured um and it's definitely a highlight here uh i really should have kept it on for longer but just one of my favorite shots and you'll see a drastic difference here it's a very similar looking shot uh to this one but not as much detail because i think i'd turn a little more and face the sun as a puzzle was coming off i um, mean you're seeing a lot more flaring onto the side here the more i turn towards the sun which also gives it a very unique look but i just think the amount of detail that was captured here and the colors i was able to bring back out of it just such an aesthetically pleasing shot i could watch this one over and over and over again and not get tired of how beautiful it looks moving on to the third act of the video here when the leaves take the ice for their evening skate and you're going to notice right away a huge change in the environment and the tonal shift here um, obviously we are not in golden hour anymore we are not kind of in the middle of the day with the harsh sunlight this is getting into blue hour this is right before the sun fully goes down and so this lighting now changes from you know the natural sunlight to these floodlights at the top of the stadium and i thought it just really gave a fantastic friday night football style feeling the players still had fun with it wearing sunglasses we have mitch marner here kind of you know smiling as he's walking in with some shades so a very different vibe than the sabers uh skate but i think it splits the video up very effectively into different visual sections as well i really quickly just want to scrub back here to talk about these two shots here which are kind of my establishing shots for the leafs coming onto the ice uh, fun fact about these these were actually shot kind of halfway through the practice i just noticed one of the equipment managers carts lying there with you know the logo and the text here toronto maple leaf hockey club and also a uh, practice jersey just laying here so i just managed to get a couple quick shots of the cart and the actual jersey 
and put it at the beginning of the sequence just so people understand all right the sabers are off the ice the leafs are now on the ice this is a new part of the video and we're going to go and see what happens from here you can even see it in this tunnel reveal shot toronto maple leafs right over the tunnel so effectively with these three shots i transitioned from the sabers coming off the ice and now you notice it's a completely different time of day it's a completely different team just by using a cart a jersey and an entrance tunnel to kind of shift the gears on the video and introduce uh this new set of characters and this new set of individuals in a completely new environment so i want to break down these leafs walk-in shots really quickly here because there's two things i do specifically to make these more aesthetically pleasing uh number one i'm shooting low to the ground and upwards towards my subject and i'm also shooting into these lights right here and i have made a video about this before which i'll link down in the description but one way to make your sport videos more cinematic is number one if you can shoot low and a low angle up towards a subject it just gives them a more powerful looking pose uh they look bigger than life you're you know they're kind of towering above you and then shooting into the lights using a mist filter just gives these lights a lot more bloom you can see kind of it flaring as they walk by it just gives a really more aesthetically pleasing look i would always recommend if you can shoot into lights it does give your videos a bit more of that cinematic pleasing image uh and again these floodlights are fantastic so the combination of squatting down next to them and shooting into the light just led for these really nice looking entrance shots uh, of the players and the coach. Moving on now to this sequence here with the Leafs practicing uh, a couple close-ups and isos of some of their stars, but I'm gonna hop back here to this first shot for a second. So we talked about weather before, and I think this is a perfect example to show how dynamic the weather was on this day and how unique it was to shoot because we went from a really sunny day to a really snowy evening and just this whole image here this is just an establishing shot i wanted to get because it encapsulated so much of what made this a unique environment you have a literal football stadium in the background a hockey rink with professional players practicing you have the floodlights the friday night lights feeling i keep talking about and then all the snow just falling in slow motion it's just such a unique vibe and a unique look it's just so kind of calming and peaceful yet at the same time so cool to look at so another one of my favorite shot in this, shots in this video is just the snow falling onto morton's field uh, as we get into the evening moving on from the scenic shots we have a lot of close-ups of the players iso shots uh, just familiar faces for the fans to recognize here we have Tavares by himself a close-up of his face um, framed to the left side of the screen very similar to the way i framed up the sabers using the rule of thirds negative space up here lots of breathing room i'm actually shooting low up towards Tavares. I just have my camera at like my stomach or my chest pointing upwards while he was by the bench and again this just gives that image of a larger than life persona uh, we even get a little bit of a light flare here which is a nice touch just to add more detail more interesting kind of elements to the shot itself moving on to Marner here a uh, very similar looking shot to Tavares framed up to the left side of the screen lots of negative space lots of breathing room here we have some snow as a nice touch another element in this shot um, but the reason I want to talk about this one is because it directly mirrors one of the Sabre shots earlier when they came onto the practice Marner's having a good time he's laughing and smiling with his teammates and here we have the Sabres at the beginning of their sequence smiling having a good time so I wanted to very much mirror that same kind of emotion before we get into the action for the Leafs after Marner we just got a couple more ISO shots very similar situations to Tavares and Marner it's just Matthew skating by the boards and TJ Brody just kind of hanging out and then we get into the actual action here more speed ramps just to highlight certain moments like I was saying before here we have Peter Mrazek making a glove save uh, a really nice close-up shot of someone skates in the puck as they kind of carve around more slow motion moments more just highlighting little details here and there that you wouldn't normally notice at full speed and the rest of the sequence just very much mirrors the Sabres sequence we saw before. Lots of slow motion, lots of speed ramps just to capture the players, the, the moments that you wouldn't normally see in, in higher speeds. It's definitely more of a slow paced edit, obviously, but we have Tavares here. We have Jason Spencer protecting the puck. Uh, just a couple of ISOs of a couple of guys on the team. We have Matthews taking a shot and it's speed ramps right into someone else shooting. So there's two things here. Obviously Austin Matthews is known for a shot. So just slowing it down here, you can see a stick flexing. You can see where he's looking you can see the puck come off his stick just small little details you wouldn't normally see seeing this in full speed and then the speed ramp right after a shot into another player taking a shot I've mentioned this before in other videos, but if you wanna chain shots together, if you wanna match cut, using specific actions, such as someone shooting a hockey puck is a great way of doing that. And we do that right here with Matthews. As soon as he shoots his puck, we have a quick speed ramp into someone else shooting a puck. Two very, very similar looking actions, different framing, but at the same time makes an easy transition because they're doing the same thing in back-to-back -back cuts. I love this shot of Mitch Marner here, low to the ground, a wide shot, not a close-up this time, so you can see a lot more of the environment around him. You see the back 
backdrop of the stadium, you see the floodlights giving it a really nice aesthetic look. We have this shot of Andre Kasha here, which is very similar to the shot uh, I got of the Sabres earlier that I was obsessing with. It's another close-up shot. You see the weather, you see the snow coming down on him, you see the reflections on the visor and the helmet of the lights. Just a really aesthetically pleasing looking shot, in my opinion, really sharp. I love the way this one turned out. And then here we have another cutaway shot of some skates uh, just to break away from players' faces. I think people get kind of tired if it's just the same style of portrait shot for too long and too consistently back to back to back. So a nice little cutaway of some skates here. We have Taveras skating through the snow. We have a light flare here, just another really aesthetically looking slow motion image. Eric Schalgren right here has the lights in the background turning away from the camera, just a nice little slow motion moment. And then we have a William Nylander ISO here of him looking uh, into the distance. This is the last shot of the video. I realized at this point I had about five seconds left and I didn't have any William Nylander uh, ISOs or shots. So I decided to put him in here. And it's a really nice looking shot because he does have some breathing room here. And then the light kind of refracts through the glass and kind of gives this glowing effect. So I really liked it. And then we end on the logo to end the video. And that does it for this breakdown of the 2022 Heritage Classic teaser trailer that I got to work on for the NHL. Truly just a project in a moment. I will never forget getting to shoot my first NHL event of any kind and just some of my favorite frames that I've ever captured because of the different situations, shooting a golden hour, shooting in the snow. There's so much in this video and I was glad I was able to sit down for you guys, kind of break it down shot by shot, explaining my mentality, explaining my decision making. And I hope you guys got something out of that. I know it was a very impromptu and kind of running gun breakdown, kind of just sitting down and going by the seat of my pants. But I hope you guys got something out of it. And as always, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Now, I know I didn't talk about color in this video and a few people might be upset about that but I just wanted to keep the runtime of this video as short as possible I don't even know where I'm at in terms of my record time but let me know in the comments down below if you want to see a color grading breakdown for this video if there's enough interest I'd be more than happy to do it also speaking about color grading if you guys are interested my LUT pack will be going on sale for the next two weeks as of the release date of this video as a bit of a thank you and a celebration for letting me hit 2,000 subs which was a milestone I hit a little while ago and I just never really got to properly say thank you so for the next Next two weeks you can find my lead pack on sale the link will be down in the description below also on sale for the next two weeks is my brand new lightroom preset pack for my sports photographers out there this is something i've been working on for a while and i'm really happy to finally release sports photography was a skill i really focused on improving over the last year and a half and these three looks are just something i developed over time and people have been asking for them so i'm really happy to finally share them with you guys as a celebration for 2000 subs and they will be like i said on sale for the next two weeks on my sellify store all links will be down below as always thank you guys so much for watching today's video if you made it to the end i really appreciate it if you guys enjoyed today's video if you guys took something away from it make sure to like it down below to help me in the algorithm and if you're new here or you've watched my videos and you haven't subscribed yet please consider doing so as i would really appreciate it and that does it for today's video so i will catch you guys in the next one peace